I'm Gio Wiederholt. Uh, I came to Stanford in 1965 with a double role to set up computing in the medical school and as a lecturer in the computer science department. I had wonderful students, actually two of my PhD students visited me last weekend. One is now in Germany and the other is in this area and doesn't have to work anymore because he did well with the startup. <laughs> when I was there, computer science had just started. It was a small field. You knew everybody in the field at the time. We had a weekly meeting and all the students and all the faculty could attend and we could all understand all what we're doing. And I remember the chairman of the department, it's probably about 15 years later, telling me that now he was no longer able to read all the papers in the field. So that is what happened with computer science. And of course, computing has invaded, in the meantime, all areas of the school. In fact, I think a problem is of how, how do you distribute it so that not everything that involves computing is done in computer science. That's no longer possible because it's so inbred. And I think it's good for technological people to have a broader view. When we got our probably our third new building for computer science. I said, when, when it's done, I'll, I'll, I'll deal with the his, historical displays. So I had been collecting some for, for quite some time. I had some good contacts at IBM and other places, so they donated some. And then I've also been interacting with the Computer History Museum in Mountain View, so we actually exchanged some things. But we have, for instance, the first computer, uh, a Williams tube from the first computer in California. And that computer had 256 words, 40 bit words of memory. And it was all on, you know, on, you know, on, well, well, on tubes. And that was actually designed by Professor Husky, who I worked for in Berkeley before I came here. And I just went to his 100th birthday celebration in Santa Cruz. Uh, people talk about IBM cards, but they don't know what the so much about their background. So we also have a one dollar bill, a silver certificate. And then they can see that the size of the IBM card was based on the size of the dollar bill in 1890, because they had machines to deal with that size of m material, you know. And now, of course, people find it hard to look back that far in history. The oldest computers we have are some Swiss mechanical computers from the 1870s, and they're very hard to figure out how they work, but they're, they're completely mechanical. Well, I, I joined the regular faculty. I took off, actually, a bit more than three years to get a PhD. When I came to Stanford, I didn't have essentially any degrees because computing didn't exist as a field, so I couldn't have studied it, of course. And so essentially, it was a dropout. In fact, strictly speaking, I still don't have a bachelor's or a master's degree, but I got a PhD at UC San Francisco, where they admitted me basically on my publication record in doing me applications in medicine. Uh, so that was a big thing coming there. And then things like the graduation of my first PhD student here, Hector Garcia Molina, who, who then went to Princeton after graduation. And now he, he's back here in the computer science department. And now he's a senior faculty member in the department. Educating people that do startups you know, doesn't keep the system going the way, way it should. You know, the, but to be a successful educator, I think you have to be broader than just purely technically super competent. And to give a broad education, I think you have to have a broad understanding. And again, I think Stanford can do that better than many other schools.